intimacy with God to me is into my heart you see. Uh, it's about God knowing everything about you and you knowing about God and um, searching f to know more and more in the depths of God. A personal relationship, I always liken it to uh, relationships uh, that you have that you see in the natural and that is you oftentimes have people that uh, you know them, you know about them, um, you know facts about them, but do you really know their heart? Do you know what's in their heart? Uh, intimacy is what's in their heart. It's knowing their dreams, their visions, their, um, the things that make them, uh, th make them excited, things that make them angry, uh, knowing uh, the very essence of who they are and loving that. And so to me, the difference between uh, having a personal relationship and being intimate is uh, you can have a personal relationship with someone but not really know all there is to. And that often happens in marriages. You might have people that have that personal relationship, but they really don't know um, what's in that person's heart. Um, so that's kind of what I look at when you uh, discern the difference between those two. You gain that, uh, that revelation of, of um, the intimacy with God through um, through time spent. Um, again, I liken it to a relationship in the natural. Um, you know, you can have a marriage, and, but they never spend time together. They might spend time together um, in the, um, uh, what I'm saying, a shallow sense where they watch a movie together, they go do something, but they're never really talking, never sharing those intimate uh, things about their heart. And so it's the same thing with God. Sometimes it's like uh, we oftentimes go to God and we pray, um, but do we really listen and do we ask? Do we sit? Do we say, God, share something about yourself that I don't know. Um, help me understand you better. These are things that are so sweet that we miss uh, when we just go and we say, God, this is what's happening. I need to tell you about this and you go off and you just share. But I think the key is listening and listening in those quiet moments. And the more that you get together with him, and the more um, you share your heart and then listen to his, uh, it causes you to grow and it causes that intense relationship that is just, um, uh, it's amazing. Um, people often say, well, you know what, I don't feel God, or I don't feel like you do. And I think we have to understand that um, we're all different. And so God is not the same to all of us. Um, you know, he, he might not be the same to you as what he is to me. He might not relate to you the way he relates to me. Oftentimes, even when I prophetically, uh, when I minister to someone, I will minister to someone completely, this person completely different to this person. Um, I might be a little bit more direct with this person. I might be a little bit more um, softer and gentler with this person in my delivery. And it's all because God knows us. He knows what we need. He knows how we respond. So I, I think the thing that people get caught up on is that God is not, God is not an emotion. He is um, reality. And so therefore, we will all touch God in different levels in different ways. I just know that oftentimes the enemy will try to use condemnation and he will try to say, well, God, you know, you're not feeling like this person or you're not having a response like this person. And I think we need to be able to develop that, uh, who we are, understanding how we relate to people and how we relate to God is quite different as unique. And I think the key is finding that uniqueness, finding um, God, how can I relate to you? How can I um, best be able to um, communicate with you, receive and to give? And, and I think that's a personal walk with God. And, and you know, all we have to do is listen and he will share. Um, I think that God oftentimes when we talk about trust, um, well, you know, I've had this happen in my life and that, and, and I, it really challenges me because I feel like I operate more in fear than trust simply because of experiences in my life. I had a very wise woman by the name of Dr. Melody uh, Hilton who once said to me, Tracy, um, God allows us to build a storehouse of trust with him. And so that storehouse of trust is built over time. 
It's not something that happens overnight. It's something that we give a little bit and then realize, wow, God did this for me. And so therefore I give a little more and he does this. And he's okay with that. Um, he's not going to be one that says, if you don't trust me all the way 100%, I don't want anything to do with you. Uh, God is not man. Um, he's, he's a God that loves and gives mer just completely uh, un, um, selfishly and unconditionally. And that's what's so awesome about God's love. So he's willing to help build that trust through that relationship. Uh, some people will say, you know, why did Jesus choose certain people uh, to be close to him? For instance, John. You know, why was John so special in the Bible? Why was John, um, why was John the one that was able to lay his head on, on Jesus' chest? Um, and I asked Jesus that one time because I, I often wondered about that. And I felt like the Lord had said to me, Tracy, I didn't choose them, they chose me. And so it was like, he said, John was the only one that came to lay his head on my chest. And so, again, I, I think the enemy will try to separate us out and try to say, well, this one's better or that one because of what they've done. Or God doesn't look at our works. He looks at our heart. And it's like, what heart is willing to draw close? And again, it's in different fashions, different manners, different ways, but it's your own individual way in which you draw close to God. So it's, it's saying, who is, you know, Jesus is there saying, who is willing to come to me because I have my arms open? Who wants more of me? Who wants that innermost of me? Who wants that? And whoever wants it, knock and come in because I'm willing to give it to you. So I don't think it's God necessarily choosing out his favorites. I think God opens up to whoever comes to be his favorites. Oftentimes we struggle with things and we say, you know, I just can't come to God. I've had people say to me already, uh, I want to I wanna be saved. I want to come. I'm hearing what you're saying about salvation, but I'm not ready yet. I'm not good enough. And I think sometimes Christians do the same thing. I want to come to God. I want more of God, but I'm not good enough. I need to get cleaned up before uh, I come to him. And, you know, I think God has to laugh at us because our ability to clean ourselves up is um, really null or void. I mean, there's, there's just no way that we are able to do um, what Jesus already has done. And really what we miss oftentimes is actually an insult to Jesus, an insult to God to say we've got to clean ourselves up when he've already sacrificed. Um, you know, God has sacrificed his greatest gift, which is his son. And uh, why would he do that if we could do it ourselves? So again, I think we go back to this and say, you know, God, if I was perfect, I wouldn't need you. If I was cleaned up, I wouldn't need you. But right now I stand dirty and a mess and I need you more than ever. So it makes me, it makes me wanna, uh, it causes a real sensitivity in my heart because I see so many people um, feeling condemned. Oftentimes there's certain religions that cause people to feel that. And because they feel that way, they're on their way to hell because they never feel they can be clean enough to come to Jesus. And that's the saddest thing, that if we stand before Jesus someday and we say, God, the only reason why I didn't come to you because I didn't feel like I was clean enough. Religion is us trying to clean ourselves up and be the perfect candidate to win God's approval. When relationship, and that's why I hate religion, relationship is saying, Daddy God, you have reached down to me and have pulled me up out of the muck and mire. And it's only because your grace, it's only because your grace and your mercy and your sacrifice, it's nothing about me. If we want to be powerful, it's got to be the less of us and the more of him. So anything else is superficial and um, hypocritical and uh, the world doesn't buy it. And religion has done that for years and it's pushed the world away. We take each day and it's just like your best friend. Um, it doesn't matter what you do, it's that you're with them. And so you can share that experience with them. It's like they're walking with you all day long, something exciting happens and you go, wow, did you see that? And I wouldn't do it out loud because people think you're a little crazy, 
But the bottom line is you can, you can share that moment, or if it's a negative thing, say, God, wow, what do I do with this? I mean, people talk about being prophetic, and you think oftentimes, oh, you know, it's a supernatural thing. You know, the prophetic is simply being right next to God and hearing Him and sharing with Him and hearing, what do I say to this person that just lost their parent or their child? Or what do I say to this person who's down and out? God, what do I say? You know their heart better than anyone. You know what's going to ignite in them something. What can I share? And my friends, if we listen, if we really listen, he's there to share, share, and he will share abundantly. And that's what's really cool. So it's not that we feel all the time. I know there's, again, a lot of married couples. Uh, there's a lot of people that I've encountered in friendships. Do I always feel like I love them? Do you always feel like you love your spouse? No, but it's a commitment and we can't go by our emotions. Our emotions are awesome. They are like, I often liken them to um, the color of paint on a, on a uh, painting. So it describes, you know, it helps be able to describe what that mood is. And it helps describe what that's trying to communicate, that picture. And so our emotions are very important. But if all we had was color and there was no structure in that painting, it would be mass confusion. And um, so really what that is, is our emotions without some kind of foundation and structure is really, um, it's not really a value. So you have to um, have that firm foundation of God's word and his truth mixed with the emotions. But when our emotions supersede that, that's when we get in trouble and we feel like God isn't there or we feel like we're not good enough or we feel like, well, my friend, feelings are not truth. God is truth. Feelings are there to help um, communicate that truth and ignite that truth. At the deepest times I've had with the Lord, um, the dearest times were probably some of the most painful times. Um, so it's not that I look forward to pain, but I'm just saying that um, Jesus is amazing. Uh, God is amazing. And it's amazing that you can have pain that hurts so good when you're in his presence. And he is amazing in how um, he takes and he evolves us in to, um, he evolves us in to the fullest potential that we are able to be. He sees in us what others don't see, and he never gives up on us. And so the thing that I've always found that no matter how I feel or no matter what I go through, he is always continuing there, being so faithful and true. It is in those times in the depths of despair that I have found him so near and dear. That's where I've developed such a passion for intimacy with Jesus, is in those times. And so you ride those in the high times, but in those low times, it's when you really get the, the meat and the depth of that true relationship of him. He's just so, so amazing. And, um, and just so never, never gives up on us. So I just say to you, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you feel, never give up on the one who loves you most. That's something that out of anything, that's what I would like to lend to you today. Mm -hmm.